Hi everybody, it's Cindy from Astner. Cindy, how are you today? I'm here at the airport. My flight's delayed, of course. And so I thought I would share with you some of the things I've been listening to. So you guys know that keto for me or low carb eating is a way of life. And as you hop on, welcome. It is uh, November 2nd. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the power of your thought life. Because whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, that is going to be your reality. So hi everybody, hi. Hi Patty, let me see if I got my glasses. So I'm here at the airport, I only have a few minutes to talk. But one of the things I've been doing as I live this um, health focused lifestyle, one of the things I really try to do on Ask Nurse Cindy is share with you different scientific presentations I go to, different lectures I hear. And I'm, I don't wanna say I'm branching out because I've always been interested in the power of the mind. That's one of the things that, um, hi Tammy, how are you? As, as we go through life, what we think is actually who we become in many ways. And I could never figure out how I could be so optimistic in life and I could be so upbeat in my natural personality and be thankful for the job I had, yet I couldn't control my eating. So I thought, why is that part of my brain broken? Why, why is that part not working? And I came to find out when I discovered a low carbohydrate way of eating, more whole foods, healthy fats, uh, ketogenic, whichever, whatever you want to call it. And hit, hi, everybody, as you're hopping on, hit share. Because um, what I'm going to talk to you about is the power of your thought life. The day before Halloween, I did something about what, what are you going to, determine what you're during this feasting season what is your determination of what you're going to eat and not eat because what we think is going to predict our behavior it's actually going to rule our behavior and so if we think well i just don't know how i'm going to handle it i, I i'm it's going to be a lot of temptation you're much more likely according to the science and the literature and the research into the power of our thought life what happens between here and here in my brain no action i take occurs without a thought preceding it. Even if you think something is a reflex, you touch a hot pan and your hand jerks back. While that might be reflexive, there is a signal that went up to your brain that said that is very dangerous and hot and your brain immediately has you take action and pull away. And that's why the ability to sense and feel is so important to protect us. In wound care, I could go into a whole different thing about that. But anyway, the power of your thoughts will determine your trajectory. And it's not just about eating. This is not just about eating, but what we eat, literally, it triggers a whole cascade of hormonal responses. And the reason I couldn't handle my eating or manage my eating well, I felt out of control. I don't know, can anybody give me some thumbs up if you've ever felt out of control about your eating behavior, that you felt that you, once you took a bite or once you were exposed to something and got it in your system, you just felt that you were on this binge. It's very similar because when we eat those sugars, when we eat those carbohydrates and they're digested, the hormonal response that goes up to my brain is ah this is a pleasurable activity it literally releases you've heard of comfort foods it literally releases dopamine and dopamine is very soothing it's that comfort that ah but it's short-lasting right so when we realize the freedom that ketogenic eating can give you because the hormones change when I change what I put in my mouth my hormonal response changes as well and so instead of my blood sugar up and down and up and down and me having this just visceral need to eat because my home hormones are telling me you're starving, your blood sugar's dropping, you're in danger, eat, eat, eat. I, without that trigger of the glucose or the sugar, I don't have this big wild swings in hormones. And for the first time in my life, I'm control. I'm in control because I'm not hormonally driven to eat now. Let's take that a step back. So hormonally, I've changed my response. But have I worked on changing how I think about food? Because remember, no action in my life ever comes about without me first having a thought about it. And what we think about grows. And so if we think about I can't have this and I can't have that and I'm missing out and all my friends are getting to eat this stuff, if that's what you think, that will grow to the point that it's gonna be very, very hard to resist. However, if, and I'm preaching to myself, if you don't think I don't have um, choices I make every day, I'm traveling the next three days. I've got an expense report, an expense account. I can spend a bunch of money and it's not coming out of my pocket because the company pays for me to be on the road. I could, and I did, 
I did for 20 some years with this type of travel I've been doing, use that as my excuse to buy the most amazing amount of junk. But I thought, oh, it's free, I should eat it. So if you walk into the, the uh, break room at work and there's all these donuts and people are gonna start bringing in all the goodies for if they don't already do it. If you think, oh, it's free, I should eat it. It really is, there's a different way you might wanna think about it and I've tried to think about it, is what is it going to cost me? Is it gonna cost me control? Is it gonna cost me that feeling of success I've had? Will it send me down this cascade of binging that I really, really don't ever want to go into again? I don't ever wanna do that. So what we think, our thought life, ladies and gentlemen, is please share this on your page. Please share this to your group. This is the season where so many people are just gonna blow it out. And what happens is we have feelings of remorse and we have regret and there's self-loathing. And instead, I hope you join me in committing that there is nothing in this season of feasting and what i what do i mean by the feasting season we passed we passed through halloween amen thanksgiving christmas all the christmas parties that go with it new year's eve super bowl party valentine's day um easter so between now and april there's one excuse after another including your birthday your husband's birthday your boyfriend girlfriend friends best friends since high school's birthday you name it there's always going to be things in front of us that can derail us from our informed self-care. We want to take care of ourselves. You're worth it. You are a valuable, wonderful person who inside really wants to find joy, to have purpose, to have fulfillment, to help others. What is your greater goal for being here? Trust me, it's not the donut. Trust me, it's not the hot chocolate or that, the spiced apple cider or whatever it is that, that's eggnog that's going to be in your pathway. So let's think about what we're thinking about. What we think about grows. So here's what I, I like to, and this was just such a great, her name is Dr. Caroline Leaf, like a leaf on a tree, L-E-A-F. She's a neuroscientist who talks a lot about the power of our thoughts and our mindset. My mindset is I'm gonna have a wonderful feasting season. I'm gonna focus on my relationships and being with people and eating good, wonderful, lush, great tasty food that's satisfying and doesn't get me off the track of what I'm wanting for my health and that's what I want for you so what are you going to think about this season type in for me let's share with each other what is it that I'm going to put on my glasses and see if I can look at how cute I am with my blue glasses that match my blue outfit isn't that so cute Dollar Tree ladies and gentlemen I'm very frugal Okay, you're making, oh good, Sharon's making the cheesecake recipe for the holidays. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Helene. What are you guys doing? Valerie is uh, failing to plan sets you up for planning to fail. That's is so, so true. Planning and preparing is the key to getting through it. It is so true, Valerie. Um, yeah, what are you guys doing? What are you thinking about? Here's what I think about. I've been set free for the first time in my life. I've been, for the first time ever, feel that I have control over something that has, has possessed me almost for all these years. Now, does Cindy never overeat? Well, of course I overeat on certain times. I stress eat here and there. What I've decided, my mindset, my decision that I've made is that if I do have a day where I'm self-soothing with that, it's with Duke sausages or it's maybe an extra um, hard boiled egg or it's, you know, maybe I'll make some of my pumpkin spice muffins, but it isn't sugar because it's just such a slippery slope if you well i can't say you i don't some people my, my son-in-law jason can tap in and out great control he's much younger he works out he can be keto he knows his brain's better but he can go and have carbs i'm scared to death of doing that because for 59 years carbs ruled me i am a recovering carboholic so my mindset that i've chosen and we choose our thoughts we we choose which ones we focus on so thoughts will land in your brain and you can let them sit there and fester and, and produce a toxic behavior. You can make a toxic action to your health goals. Or when that weird thought of, oh gosh, look, they brought in donuts. Ooh, nobody's here. You can flick that off. You can reject that and say, my vitality and my pride in what I'm doing. And this isn't about the scales. This is about you taking care of yourself, me taking care of myself for the first time ever in the sense of, I found a plan that works for me. So when you set your mindset that during the holidays, I may have extra turkey or I may have some extra eggs and bacon, but I won't go down that slippery slope because it's, I heard this one uh, doctor lecture about like you're standing at the top of Crisco Mountain, which of course we don't use Crisco, 
with banana peel slippers and all it takes is one little push, one little taste to whoof and you shoosh down. So I hope you listen to some of the stuff by Dr. Caroline Leaf. I'm glad that you're all um, here today. So let me see if anybody else, type in what you're gonna do for the holidays. Keto pumpkin bread for Karen, that's fantastic. Um, good morning, Lori, uh, keto everything only, yeah. So if you overeat, it, it may be too many calories for the day. Oh, Shelly, Hurricane Michael knocked you for a loop. Yeah, so holiday meal will be compared to that. Oh my gosh, of course. And you know what, give yourself grace for that. A hurricane literally will knock everything down in its pathway, including what's available to us to eat. The important thing is if you fell off the wagon, don't let it run over you. <laughs> don't, don't keep running ahead of it and lay back down in the road and let it run over you. The wagon is there. It's for you to get back up on and let it carry you over those rough patches. That doesn't mean we won't jostle. So my, my sincere um, empathy for what you went through. But yeah, so that's, I'm sorry that you went through that. So we can do this. Yeah, Faye, we can, we can do this. So you guys, oh, you're, so Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree for my glasses. So Mindy, good for you for restarting again. Uh, there's a proverb that says a righteous man falls down yet gets up seven times, falls down seven times yet gets back up again. So it's a learning process for all of us. Um, I'm getting more into the types of inflammatory oils. Oils I need to really uh, reduce from my diet much more strictly, I think, than I have with my travels. So we, we all fail in one way or another. We all have um, uh, stalls and things like that. Yeah, so good. Oh, Andrea, good. So you're getting back on. Um, you can do it, Andrew. You're worth it. So lush way of eating. That's right. Thanks for remembering that. Oh, who is that that did that? Let me go back up. Hi, Peggy. Lush to me, lush way of eating stands for lower your carbs, up your fats. That's the U. L is lower. U is up your fats. S is sustainable amounts of protein. And H means you're going to be healthier and happier. I'm happier, more content, and more vivacious and sassy I've ever been in my life. And it's because my hormones are different. It's not because I, I finally found willpower after 59 years, heaven forbid, no. But when you change the food, you change how your body responds. And when you change that, what you're really changing is the hormone response. And when your hormones are normalized, when you're not putting a lot of preservatives, a lot of dyes, a lot of weird things you can't even say into your body, your body responds in a way that I have never experienced before in my life and it has truly set me free. So you guys continue to share this. Go ahead. I've got to go see if my plane's boarding. Uh, that would be the worst thing would be to stand here, be talking to you guys and <laughs> oh, my sister Debbie's here. You guys, Debbie Stokes is my sister and, and I just love her. She, it's all that this is all her fault because she forced me into doing it. So yeah, so we have a lush way of living. We're lush ladies. I think I was looking at the stats the other day, which sorry, I'm in an airport. Yep. Oh, it's Chicago. It's not me. Okay, so you got to go. But anyway, she and I have been doing this together, and she's she's lost. My whole family, we're down over 900 pounds. So share this video. Your thought life is the power that you need. And what you think on grows. So if you think on what you can't have, it's going to be a very hard season. If you think of what you can have, if you look at some recipes, if you pull out some keto cookbooks, if you bought them, then you're going to find yourself on the other side of the holidays when everybody else is doing their New Year's resolutions and oh my God, I gained 20 pounds over the holidays. You'll be standing proud and strong because what you think about determines where you end up. So you guys have a good day. Mwah. Hit the share button. Talk to you soon. Bye.